All righty, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour right here on TFNN.com. Don't forget, folks, you can listen to us anywhere. You can listen to us on your mobile phone at TFNN.MOBI. You can even check us out live on Tiger TV at TFNN, and you can check us out inside the eSignal platform broadcast coming to you live every day. Let's check out where the markets are at right now for your lunchtime market wrap. We got the S&P is currently down six and a half points. We have the Russell down five, the NASDAQ down four. We'll get on over at the Dow. The Dow is currently down 84 points on the day. And uh, so some obviously some negative movement happening in the indices after a little oscillation there. We'll see where they end up. But Dow is heading down strong right now. We'll get on over at Copper. Copper right now is uh, pretty flat on the day. It's down about uh, you know 0.15%, so not a massive move there. Gold sort of quiet at the moment. It's currently up just a few points. Silver is currently down um, a tenth of a percent, so not that big of a move there in that either. We did have a massive uh, gold spike that happened a little earlier before it dropped on back. Checking out our energy markets. We got oil right now is up 87 cents on the day. We got... Uh, look at that natural gas. We got natural gas is currently uh, down about a third of a percent. And looking on over at our ag marks, we got corn right now down one percent, but soybeans is pretty flat. So uh, pretty flat on the day. Uh, going on in and diving into our FX markets, we got pound dollar is currently sitting down right now. Um, about four pips, not too big of a move there. We got euro dollars up three. We got the euro pound up two. Dollar franc is down a mere four pips. U.S. yen's up five. We'll get on over at the uh, euro yen. It is up uh, eleven. And let's see here. We got a uh, Aussie yen currently down thirty pips on the day. The dollar index is uh, down a little bit, and the bonds are up. Uh, you know, a little bit. Not too much of a move there. All right. So that gets us caught up, and want to do a review with you. And see, uh, we had one other trade I wanted to check out for today, um, the IFO Business Survey, see if there's anything there. But first things first, let's go in and let's check out where the dollar CAD trade's sitting at. We'll pull that one up, and let me um, roll this on over and uh, get that for you. I just need to do a little movement there on my chart. There we go. Okay. And uh, let's check out the trade we had. Again, that was over on the euro dollar, or is that the dollar CAD? This one was dollar CAD. So let's check out the dollar CAD and just see if it stayed within the expectations or not. And um, as a reminder, sometimes we have to lag into these trades. Sometimes you can't get the fills. Sometimes the fills are even better than expected. This matters what the implied volatility is on the day. So on this trade specifically, we were looking at the announcement um, for retail sales coming out. And our trade that we had uh, put on the list here uh, was, and again, th there's a lot of ways to use these. One of them is to trade directly on Nadex. The other one is just to have some sort of idea of expectations of movement, okay, and see if it stays anywhere within that expectation or not. We had a pretty big move that happened on this trade. If you go in at 8 o'clock, it actually ran up a lot more than the average move, ran up 47 pips. It ended, if we take it all the way to 10 a.m., it ended over here at 33. So definitely outside of our range. We were hoping to keep that inside the 20 pips um, on the day. But uh, anyways, that's that catch up on uh, this morning's trade. And let me see here. we got a caller calling in right now um, from Lou from Natchez. Uh How you doing, Lou? Hey, fine. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Great. Uh, do you think it's a good time to jump into silver? Um, well, let me pull it up and let's look at it right now. All right? Okay. <laughs> Nothing like knowing if it's a good time where we're at. Uh, let's see. That's gold, which has been heading uh, pretty far south. But uh, hopping on over to silver. Um, silver just had a pretty massive down move with a high volume right there yesterday. Was that yesterday, I believe? Because we had quite a bit of volume on it two days ago. We had a massive volume bar right there. That's going to be a little bit of a magnet. It's going to pull it and hold it. You can see as it had that massive volume. See how it pulled back up, and then even today pulled stayed back up at that level right now. Um, I don't know if you're looking at the same chart there, but over on uh, September 19th, we had a volume of about 43,000 contracts. <laughs> right. And then moving on back, uh, I mean, the way I trade, I wouldn't be hopping into it yet. 
So okay. I, I think it still has room to go down. I think we just had a lot of volume pushed through the last uh, couple magnet levels that existed on silver. And uh, it could go through. It could make another magnet. I'm, we're most likely after that kind of volume to see the market uh, oscillate for a little bit and go flat for probably about a week. So uh, that's what I would expect on silver right now. And then where it's going to go next, I'd, I'd want to see some volume pushing either back up above this magnet level, back up above 1850 mark, or further on down. But I wouldn't just be hopping into a long position at the moment. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Hey, you bet. Thanks for calling in. All right, so uh, d definitely call in anytime about anything, stocks, futures, forex, options, Nadex, binary spreads. We'll love to hear from you. And uh, just to go over what I was looking at, and I talk about this you know, on the shows a lot, magnet pricing, and Tommy talks about it in his Art of Timing the Trade book. But if you go in and you know, just go in and basically find uh, you know, price level indicators, say, you know, I got thinker swim up at the moment. But if we plot this on here and look at it, and we'll see that, you know, there's a pretty good uh, volume there at 21 right there. So we got this $21 level. And then we go over, and basically, I'm just trying to find the really high volume price levels, okay? And which ones stand out the most. So first, I'm just going to go to the biggest levels I can find. And that's going to give me an idea of where I should expect the market to slow down each time it hits that level. We have that level again right there. And it looks like, in reality, we're going to have to go further back. To really see where it's going next, because we just established a new magnet. So if it does fly back up, where do we think it's going to move to? And uh, most likely right back up here to this last high volume bar, we're probably looking somewhere around 19.1 if it does move up. What if it goes on back? Well, let's go ahead and let's uh, load a little more data here. And let's see if we can uh, get some high volume bars, but further back in time, okay? And again, we'll be looking uh, below 17.4. So now you got to go pretty far back to get that information so okay so we're way back here going down all right that's going to put us back on but really 2010 to get back down to these levels so in that sense you got you know the market hasn't been down there but you know how the market goes man if it starts going down it can just keep on flying and so now i want to find some really high magnets really below where the market's at at the moment see that one's going to be above it up at 21 we got uh, here really is the next, let's see, this one is going to be 19. And let's see, here we, we don't really get another one until down at 16.6 right there. And so we'll see if we go any further back. Do we get anything that's really good further back, lower than that? Let's see, here we got another magnet right here, 17.17. So we can put that one on there. There we go. And then we'll see if we got anything else. I'm just trying to find out where all magnets may be lining up so we have some ideas on silver. And sometimes, I mean, you got to go years back to find the data. And uh, so looking at this now, and now what we can do is we can back down and we can zoom in. Let me adjust this one right here. Let's see. Let's edit that one. Or we'll just delete it, one of the two. Um, remove that drawing. Let's see. Let's remove that drawing. We'll draw one more right there just to get it right there fine-tuned for us. And now that we have that one, okay, um, and we basically just, like I said, we just established this magnet over here on this price level of basically 1780 right there. Then what we do is we go, okay, well, where's it going to next? Well, if it goes back down, it could easily pull into about 17, 16. If it goes up, we have a nice up move. We're really not looking to hit any kind of resistance to about 19, 20. So those are really your two levels right now. Um, what you will notice if you go back and look at those high magnet volume bars, is what you're going to see over and over again is often the market will just go into chop oscillation for about four or five days after letting that kind of volume out. And, uh, you know, we go right here, we can see that. We go look at this last high volume bar. We can see it go to chop right there. So another big move, sort of like uh, happened a couple days ago, and then look what happened over the next week. And then it moved on further down. And uh, let's we'll see, going on back, we got the last one right here. We have that. We got we actually got a little chop where it just bounced up and down, but see how it stayed right on that magnet again and again and again on that magnet in that same area before it went to another magnet level, up or down. So that's just, uh, you know, I usually wait for a break with a little bit of volume to it before I you know, just try to hop on in there. 
but I don't see any reason just to go long at the moment. All right, so everything I have says down, and that make next target 1711. Um, going in and looking at where we have our other ones, we can go in and pull on up. Just look a little bit deeper into it. Check out silver over here. And just to see what we have uh, just for today. So just the magnets for today. And I'll pull up the 10-minute uh, bars over here. And uh, we'll see where we're at on deviation levels. Okay? So right here, and again, this is just a daily move versus a magnet level. And on the uh, deviation move for the day on silver, uh, we are down already for the day. We have hit 1%. We actually hit that uh, in the morning. Uh, market flew down, flew back up. So it came down half a deviation, ran up half a deviation. And we were there literally by 4.30 this morning. We were already at a one deviation move, which means we don't really expect a whole lot to happen for the rest of the day. We see it pull on back down to settlement, and now it's sort of just chopping around settlement. It's going to look like it did nothing, even though it did have some pretty big moves. Um, if it does pull back up, I mean, it could pull back up to 17.96 right about now. Uh, that really would be about the highest I would expect it to go. But I uh, would be surprised to see it pretty flat. And silver market's closing up here in just a few minutes, so that's also going to lower the volume on silver. Um, going into gold, let's see what we can find on gold. And we'll come back to dollar cat here, some of the other trades here in a moment. But let me see what I can find that maybe we can do. We just got minutes left on gold, okay? And so checking that out, let's see. We've moved already a deviation on the day. Obviously no big trends, but we're not looking for a big trend this late into the hour. And I'm going to go through. I'm going to look and just see. Okay, so we're at 1222.3. And if I go into gold right now, Pull that up. See if there's anything there. We are so very close. We got about 15 minutes left. All right. Well, I'm, I'm looking right now about 10 minutes left, actually. I'm looking at 1221. It's potential. It's so cheap. Um, it's a potential trade. So you may want to check that out. We'll be back right after this. All right. Welcome we'll on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're checking out gold right now. Looking at it going into the close. We got five minutes left on the close. And uh, we're really looking at just uh, two potential strikes. We got 1221. We got 1224. Uh, 1224 obviously being three points away. Not a lot of value to that. 1221 having a potential. You know, if you sold that for, say, 95, 96, and you can get out of the trade for any kind of any kind of profit on it, it could actually be a fantastic trade. It's got to move down about one point, though, in the next five minutes. So it's got five minutes, six minutes to do its thing. We'll see if that happens or not. It's a very low risk, high payout trade. Uh, called expiration trend collection. We've been sort of oscillating, moving up and down right here. It did actually just pop down during the commercial break quite a bit, down to 1221. It got down to uh, just a couple ticks off of the low that we wanted. So the, the action is there. We'll see if it'll keep moving. One of the things I'll use when I look at this is I'll pull on up and I'll open up. Let me see if I can show you here. A, um, a DOM as well. And let me open a DOM. We'll get into that. And really, uh, probably one of the better DOMs out of, you know, there's different DOMs you can use. But if we hop on over to uh, Thicker Swim, one thing I like is their DOM is 10 levels deep. And so I can go over here, check this out, sort of see where the orders are sitting at, what it's going to have to bust through to make that happen. Got a lot of 20s and 30s, got a lot of 30s, got bigger numbers up here. A lot of times during the end of the day, they're sort of pushing that in there to push that down. It won't attract it to it as heavily. And often we'll see it go the other direction. So... Uh, that's one way to look at it. There's, uh, you know, a lot of different little tools that can help you analyze volume and um, how it moves. I'm trying to open up a couple of them right now just so I can show you some different things that you can use. But the the DOM, the depth of market, where you're seeing the limit orders of traders on the other side of the market, where they're currently at, that usually is one of the more helpful ones. Uh, we can break this down. We'll go down to, you know, one minute just to really get right down into it and see where it's going. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's one of those you can do a lot of low risk trades with it um, to, you know, see how it works and put all the pieces together. But we'll see. It may go up first, then it may go down, it may drop, but it definitely has the room to move down in this oscillation. And don't forget, you don't have to hold on to your trades till expiration. You can always put in an early take profit order as well. So just if it hits 1221, you can buy back, say, at 57. 
So, which would be a great uh, return on the trade. And let's see here. What do we got? And I'm trying to look at what the um, ping is. I'm, I was wanting to open up a couple instruments for you on another tool, but I just don't have it active right now. So I'll have to come back to it and um, get that one going for you. Okay? Um, all right. Well, we'll have to do that one next time. But right now, so we got that up as a potential trade. And, again, there's only a couple minutes left on it. All right, so what else can we check out while that uh, is playing itself out here in the next few minutes? A couple things you definitely want to be aware of uh, is, let's see here, what do we got? I I was noticing last night I was working with some traders, and we were going through the sign-up process for opening a live Nadex account. And they added in the ability, you'll notice, if you go create an account for Nadex, uh, but it used to say for U.S. residents only. Well, now that has changed. If you click on next step, here's what you're going to see. There's not one. That note isn't there. And two, you're going to see we got Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. of A, which includes the U.S. territories. So uh, pretty sweet uh, that they, they are expanding out. Those are the first couple countries, plus the territories of the U.S. They're expanding out to looking forward to having many, many more countries um, on that list. But uh, so far, that's where they're at. But uh, if you are in Canada or if you are in Mexico, then you don't have to wait. You don't have to hope that eventually you'll be able to, you know, one day trade it because you can trade it right now. You can actually sign up for a live account. Now, maybe you want to get started to try to figure out how things work. Of course, you can always get trading, go to demo trading account right there on the Nadex platform. Again, that link is right there on the right side of the homepage of TFNN. But again, uh, trading, demo trading account. Click on that and uh, just fill in the form, username, password, you know, all that fun information. And you'll be uh, signed up and set up right away. But what if... You could have the opportunity to win some real cash while trading in a demo account. Well, you can get a special demo account just for a virtual trading competition that's coming up. We're starting this up next week. Hop on over right now to TFNN.com, okay? And on that, you're going to want to click on the virtual trading competition link. Less than 48 hours are left to register, so definitely take advantage of it right now. We're going to go over the details, make sure you understand them when we get back from this break. Stay right there. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour right here on TFNN. We're talking about the virtual trading competition that TFNN is launching out next week. $10,000 in cash giveaway. And so step one, how do you get there? TFNN.com. Click on the banner on the homepage that says virtual trading competition. Step two, what do you do next? Fill in the form. First name, last name, phone number, email address. Click submit. This is going to shut down. Okay, this is going to shut down in less than 48 hours. No later than September 25th at noon. Taking the form down. So make sure you do register. The competition will run from 6 p.m. on Sunday, September 28th through Friday, October 3rd. I guess last contract should be 415, okay? And you will receive your demo login ID via email the weekend, like right before the weekend before. So be checking your email to get your demo login ID. And what are some of the things you need to know? Well, first, let's talk about the kind of money you can win. Again, this is a demo account, not your current demo account, but a competition demo account, a unique demo account assigned to you just for this competition. Okay? First prize is going to be $3,000. Second prize is going to be $1,500. Third, $750. Fourth and fifth, $500. Sixth through tenth, $250 in cash. 11th through 20th, we'll also get a copy of Tommy O'Brien's book, The Art of Time in the Trade. That's where I talk about magnets a lot. If you want to see uh, where I started learning about that, that's a good place for you to go. And uh, he has a lot more. He talks about the Tiger Gartley setups and fibs and a lot more. So a lot of good stuff in there. And uh, a prize, honestly, worth more than first place, in my opinion, just because of what it can do for you in your trading. Looking at the daily winners, uh, every day, 
you know, maybe you get behind in the competition. You're discouraged, this, that, whatever. Just keep trading, okay? The whole point is to learn, that have fun. Ideally, it makes some money. Well, maybe you're not the one that's, you know, raking it in and doubling your account in a month. Maybe you are. Maybe you go in there and you make 400% and you win. I don't know. Maybe you go in there and you don't do very well, but you're learning, and you're learning for free and with a chance to make some money. Well, no matter who you are, if you place a trade every day, place at least one trade in that demo competition demo account, then you're going to be put in a bucket where we're going to draw names. We're going to draw five names every day. We're going to announce them live here on TFNN, so make sure you're tuning in to listen. First place, 100 bucks plus a book. We're going to give you a call as well to let you know that you won, okay? So first place, $100 plus a copy of Tommy O'Brien's book, The Art of Timing the Trade. And then we got second, third, fourth, fifth, also 100 bucks. So basically we're going to go in and pull five daily winners out, 25 total winners there, plus the 20 uh, from there. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of awards going out. And uh, anyways, just want you to definitely enjoy it, get involved, read the rules. Uh, you'll be using a $25,000 demo account, okay? Um, so, obviously, not that money's not real, but the cash is. Um, an individual order, this is an important rule, okay? Because we don't want somebody going in there and just throwing on 1,000 orders and getting lucky. We want, we want it to try to mimic real trading as much as possible. And so you have to enter your orders one ticket with up to 10 contracts at a time, okay? So now if you want to enter more than you know one ticket with 10 contracts, that's up to you. But you still got to get out the same way. Each ticket has to be 10 contracts at a time, okay? Or it will void you for the competition, or at least it will... Not count if it wins, and it will count if it loses, is what I believe happens. So you definitely want to do one at ticket at a time, ten contracts per ticket. Don't go in and try to do, you know, one ticket with one hundred contracts. Okay. Um, so only one demo. Sorry, you can't go in and try your fourteen different strategies in fourteen different accounts. One entry per user. Okay, per person. Um, and, of course, no manipulating anything, demo, stuff like that, or, of course, that will disqualify you. Uh, so there's going to be a daily leaderboard. We're going to display that publicly. So, and then, of course, uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, put that up there for you. So just make sure you do read through that. But number one thing, just get registered right now. Don't miss out. Don't go, oh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And then Friday comes, you're like, oh, I forgot. Or I come on the air. Well, I come on the air, you know, at 1 o'clock, you know, Eastern time. Well, if I come on the air at 1 o'clock on Thursday – and you haven't signed up, it's too late, okay? So I just want to, you know, really urge you to get in there and get it done so that way, because we have to get all the, all the, like, not we, but I don't have they do it. I don't do any of the back office stuff. I have nothing to do with it. But, um, and uh, somebody asked, can I, am I competing against y'all? No, I am not. I'm not allowed to compete against you. So I wish I was. It'd be fun, but I'm not allowed to. But um, Anyway, so I hope you all uh, do really well. hope you have a lot of fun. I look forward to answering questions and helping you out in any way I can during this trading competition. Um, all right, so let's uh, do a little review on where the market is currently at, okay, and uh, see what all we have going on. Uh, this morning we had uh, some nice moves on oil, and let me bring that chart up for you. So an oil right here moved up a deviation, down a deviation, back up a deviation. So really, really, not, I mean, just some big moves, big bounces right there with the deviation levels. If I go into NASDAQ, and uh, let me pull that one up, opened up with an uptrend and uh, went a bit choppy. And uh, let me put that one up there for you. And um, had a nice uh, uptrend going on, but then it just it got really choppy in there. A little bit of exceeding volume, but just a lot of chop. Uh, see, we're not really like blowing volume out. We're pretty just on par um, with volume. And uh, gold, massive, massive run up this morning. Um, let me bring that one up. Then it turned on back around. But uh, anyways, we were up at like 12.33. Then it ran way back down. So you had a great early morning run going straight up. And then you had this uh, massive drop, just a beautiful downtrend, plenty of momentum scalps, lots of trades going on there. Um, happening, so uh, you know. Hopefully, you caught a good chunk of the trades on gold this morning. We'll get on over to Aussie dollar. We had some profit poppers. 
and uh, deviation moves as well. So right down there, down a deviation up, and then down a deviation down. So some big, big moves in the Aussie today. And uh, nice profit popper on that one. All right, so we got a couple right there. First thing, one last night. We got one this morning. Um, and let's go ahead and let's look at the U.S. Yen. U.S. Yen, we got some spike strikers going on. And uh, I'm just looking for one of the triggers. We got uh, one buy spike. That's it. So pretty, pretty light. Uh, a couple of them alerted but didn't fire off. And that one buy spike ended up positive in the money. Check it out, dollar CAD. So, you know, we have that news this morning on the dollar CAD. And going into it, uh, we had a spike buy right there. We had a spike sell. And so that one went on down, was profitable. We had a spike buy. That one ended up profitable as well. And then uh, we had another spike over here, which was is actually pending as of the moment we're taking the trade there. So a couple good uh, spike striker trades. Spike strikers on oil. Let me bring that one up. And I'm uh, just you know showing just a variety of trades that happened today that you could have taken advantage of. We got a short spike on oil, very profitable. We got a buy spike on oil at 9:30. There ran on up. Got another buy spike to add in. And uh, anyway, two great trades. Uh, going on in, let me see what else we got. Let's see. Well, uh, just a reminder, what is the spike striker? And, you know, we uh, really focus on this a lot, usually with the oil inventory reports that come out, which is tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we're going to have the oil inventory come out. And so a lot of times I'll look for spike strikers. And really it's when volume is double that of the bars on either side. Now, I trade this on five-minute bars. I look at five, 10, and 15-minute bars. And I look for volume to basically be double that on both sides. When it is, and it breaks the, if it's a long, if I get a long, you know, if I basically I have to look at, you know, price order flow to see if I should go long or short. But if I have a long when that happens, then when price breaks the high of the bar by a tick, I buy. As you can see right here, we had a volume spike, and so it just notes it on my chart, makes it easier. Um, so I don't have to look at, you know, 5 and 10 and 15. I have to look at three charts. I can look at one. And it tells me, hey, this is a long version, so I'm going to look at a buy just above the high of this bar. When it breaks the high of that, then i got to buy. Here's like, hey, you got a volume spike sell. Okay, cool. So when it breaks the low of that, we're going to go short. It does break the low. We go short, and we have a profitable trade. Um, again, looking on over at the uh, – let's see here. Let me pull this up, and we'll go in, and we'll look at – I had it up a second ago. I think it's um, – my mouse is messing up. Like, come on. I got two mice. So I'm about to switch over if it doesn't uh, get its act together. All right. Uh, there we go. Just use the other mouse. Um, so right here tomorrow we're going to have oil inventory, and it's going to come out at 1030 a.m., okay? And so when that report comes out, usually we have a big volume spike. On most news reports, a lot of times you get a volume spike, which means you have a uh, potential reversal trade to build in and take advantage of on that. Very important to let it break that high or break that low, okay? Um, looking back on oil, let me pull up oil. We'll talk about what is the expectation of movement as well for oil. So let me open that one up for you. And we'll go over here. And let's bring this down to our oil contract. Make sure I got the right one up there. Let's see. Oh, I think I have 1014 in there somehow. I was reset my database, and I may have reset it. Let me go in and check my instrument manager on that. So go to tools, go to instrument manager. I had, t I had 1114 up on the other ones, but I have two different computers I'm doing all this on. Um, so there we go. Let me uh, find oil over here and just drop it off, put that one on. While I'm here, I'm going to update my natural gas, get that done. Okay. And let me also just check my FDEX. Yeah, get rid of that 1214 I had up there. And we'll check. Get rid of my FTSE as well. Okay. So now that I've updated my instrument manager, going back over here, let's look at the 1114 contract. There we go. Pull this on in. And we'll focus on um, exporting out. The expected high to low, okay, range for oil, and let's go down here, and let's look at Wednesday, 
And there we go. So the 10 to 11 o'clock time frame, we have a 64 pip expected range. Um, during that hour, 64 pips is our expected range on oil, okay, for the upcoming, for basically tomorrow's inventory report. Uh, but we, it sort of builds up. We start off slow. We got like 18 pips, 27, 28, 40, 64. Then it dies on back down, like 55, 39, 43. But the big number I want you to be aware of um, is that 64 pips for 10 to 11 a.m. Um, on the inventory report, okay? Um, that should help you out a little bit. And for trading that report tomorrow, okay? And uh, you can watch that over on, again, Forks Factory or one of many of 100 websites. Uh, the important link, if you click it here, you can go to Latest Release. And if you click that, it will always be the same link. So you just hit F5. Usually they'll take the report down and they'll start auto-refreshing, but you can just hit F5 until it comes up with the September 24th report. And what you'll be doing from there is you'll be looking at um, the third paragraph where it says crude oil inventories increased by you know 3.7 million barrels from the previous week. Well, that's that number that we see on the previous release, 3.7 on a negative 0.9. So they thought it was going to go down, and inventory went up. It usually means oil goes down. doesn't always mean it, though, so don't get too caught up in it. Um, so that's the first most important number. Okay, and then say at 362 million barrels, the U.S. crude oil inventory is in the upper half of the average range for this time. That's a very important paragraph because maybe you know supply went down, but it's in the upper half, so it doesn't matter. They were off on their forecast, but there's still plenty of oil there. Okay, so you really want to know, you know, is that okay? They they missed their expectation. The analyst, you know, the people they poll. And over to come up with these uh, reports, um, they, they they missed their number. But is that off of what it usually is this time of year? So those two sentences right there in the third paragraph are the ones that you usually are going to want to pay attention to. Okay? Um, let's see here. Uh, we talked about the CAD iron condor trade already. And we talked about the oil trade. We talked about a potential iron condor. Again, that was knowing what the expectations were of movement. So hopefully uh, you were able to write that down and keep that there. Um, you have that noted, so that should help you. And that's a uh, you know I bought it from open to high, open to low on the top of the hour, and then if it moves up and then down, um, plot it again. Okay. And let's see what else we have. I'm just going through my list of potential trades to look at. Looks like I might have a little issue on the sharing going on. Yeah, let me bring that back up. I'll get that fixed for you. And uh, we'll go back over that. We'll get back right after this. Stay right there. All right, folks. We're back here to the diagnostic training hour. I know we had a little screen issue there. I wanted to go back over and make sure you had the access to that crude oil inventory link. Uh, again, if you go to Forks Factory, you go to Wednesday, you go to crude oil inventories at 1030. And you click on the folder there, you'll see the latest release button. And that'll show you that release. That's that page where you can press F5 right before the report. And you can read these first two paragraphs, the first one being, what was the number? And then you can just look at what was the expectation. So you go, okay, well, the expectation is 0.7. So you're going to see, how does that compare to 0.7? Is it higher or lower? Okay. And then is that number, whatever it is, who cares about the expectation? How was it? Is it? Is that higher than average or lower than average for this time of year, especially upper half, lower half? Okay. So being a little bit stronger. So basically it's saying it's more, it's better than normal for this time of year. And, uh, you know, you can always go back. You can look at previous numbers, see how they've uh, reported out. But that gives you just a quick idea on how to trade the oil inventory. If you have that expectation number I gave you at the top of the hour, or not the top of the hour, but I, mean, I guess I can re maybe reopen it here. I'll give it to you one more time just in case you didn't get it. Okay, the expected move on oil. So expected high to low. And I go down to Wednesday, and I say, okay, what about from 10 to 11 when the release comes out? 64 ticks. High to low is the 10 to 11 expectation of movement. So you can sort of know when the move usually is going to be basically called and done. And we're pretty spot on week after week after week on this report. I can back up and go, okay, when was the last report? It was on the 17th. And then I can zoom back in over here on the 17th for you. And we can see, you know, how did that do compared to our expectations? And so right there, zoom in a little bit more, 
And we're pretty much right on it. I mean, it went a few more ticks more, but uh, just a few more ticks more. And, um, you know, pretty, very, very close to right where we expected the market to move. Uh, the expectations and the market moved down one deviation from high to low. Again, not to the one level, but from high to low. A one deviation move, and we print those every day inside the scanner for you. Today, right now, at oil, we're sitting up at a one deviation level after being up here, going back down and coming on back up. And just sort of camping out right now, up at that plus one deviation. And let me see what else I can go into for you. Um, the 23rd, let me look at a, any kind of a longer term analysis. Uh, looking at a lot of shorts over there on oil right now. Um, we had a, looking at 9040, 9035 as a target. And so we'll see how that heads out. And I want to look at one more analysis I had. I know I had some people asking a lot of stuff about uh, silver, so I just wanted to pull it up and see. But uh, nothing nothing else beyond what we already talked about. So that sort of makes that simple and easy. Okay. Um, the last bit I want to go over was just the uh, couple trades that we have coming up tomorrow. Okay. Um, and let's see. we got new home sales. That's basically the main trade on the list and from what I show inside of the new trades we already went over this but just to make sure you do have it US new home sales we're looking at a uh, move from 9 to 11 a.m. with the report coming out at 10 a.m. so entering at 9 for an 11 a.m. expiration we're looking at a $30 um, minimum profit requirement for an iron condor entering at 9 for an 11 a.m. expiration all right I hope y'all have a great day, and don't forget, again, please don't forget to go to TFNN.com, click on Virtual Training Competition, fill out the form. It never fails. People are like, can I register? And we're like, it's closed. I'm sorry. So uh, we've done this a few times now, so looking forward to doing it again. And uh, I hope to see you at a show on there. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow right here on the Diagnostic Training Hour. Stay tuned for another great show coming up right after this.